let's talk about over-the-counter birth control. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I get asked all the time about how to get pregnant, how to understand your body, but also how to prevent pregnancy, especially in ways that can help you get pregnant later in life or have fewer side effects. And the reason why is that I love your hormones. I'm an expert on the hormones. That's what I did all of my fellowship in. So today we are gonna go over the new over-the-counter progesterone-only birth control option called Opel, and I'm gonna answer all your top questions. First, thank you so much for subscribing. The YouTube channel means so much. If you would like to support spreading more information about your body and your health and your fertility, please subscribe and share. So Opel is now not just a birth control option, it's been around in different forms, but now it's an over-the-counter, meaning you don't have to go to the doctor and get a prescription. You can go to your pharmacy right now and purchase this if you're interested in it. But this birth control, the instructions and understanding it are very, very important. So let's break it down. Let's remember that this is a progesterone-only birth control. It's norgesterone. And it's not new, it's been around for a long time. And progesterone is not normally made every single day of your cycle. So we know that as that egg is growing and developing during the first part of your cycle, the follicular phase, you have estrogen being made. After you ovulate, then that follicle turns into a corpus luteum and it's going to make both estrogen and progesterone. So the first half of your cycle is estrogen dominant, that's normal, there's no progesterone. And the second half has both, and this is where you do see progesterone. Progesterone opens and closes the implantation window, meaning you can only get pregnant after the set amount of time of progesterone and too little or too much actually makes it so that you can't get pregnant. The receptivity of the uterus is so specific. This means that we can utilize progesterone exposure at times when you normally would not have it to change the ability of the body to be receptive to pregnancy. And that is one of the concepts behind progesterone-only contraception. So it is changing the implantation window, so it's changing the uterine lining. It's also thickening up the cervical mucus. The cervical mucus becomes that stretchy, sticky, egg white cervical mucus when your estrogen is at its peak right at the time of ovulation. And this is beneficial to allow the sperm to swim through it. So having chronic progesterone makes it harder for sperm to get through. And then we also see that progesterone can prevent ovulation. Now this depends on how much progesterone you have. And this is why if we look at different types of progesterone, not all of them work by preventing ovulation. So an IUD, a progesterone IUD, for example, emits a low amount of progesterone and it lasts for a very long time. It's local, so it's right in the uterus, so it's so effective at changing the cervical mucus and the uterine lining, very efficacious for preventing a pregnancy, but many times they don't actually prevent ovulation. And if you have an IUD, you might notice you still get certain symptoms like sore breast or hunger or fatigue, like you might normally in the luteal phase. If you feel ovulation, you might still feel it. And some people still have cycles even when they have that IUD in place. On the other hand, Depo-Provera, the injectable progesterone shot, is a much higher dose of progesterone, and this does prevent ovulation. And this is that shot that you get every three months, and it's preventing your body from ovulating as its main mechanism of action. So progesterone can prevent ovulation, but it's very specific to the timing and to the dose and to how much you have. So this is the big kicker to understand when it comes to O-pill. You have to take this pill within the same time every day, literally within the same 30 minute interval. So you have to be good at taking pills and you have to be able to set an alarm and have ability to take that pill around the same time every day. So if you have crazy shift work or if you get up really early during the week and then sleep in on the weekend, you're gonna have to set some time where you can be constant because that's how this actually prevents you from ovulating. And the instructions that the FDA has on Opil are actually very good at telling you what to do because that's the second question. If you miss a pill, if you are late, what does it mean? When do you start and what side effects are common? So with all type of contraception, we look at preventing pregnancy. So with perfect use, perfect use means exactly the same time, no skipping pills, 98% protection against getting pregnant, which means that if a hundred people are taking this perfectly, two will be pregnant. 
Now, typical use is more realistic, meaning you might be a little bit late here or there. You don't use it perfectly. And with typical use, we see a 91% prevention of pregnancy rate. So if 100 people are using this in the way that people typically do, nine people are going to be pregnant. So you have to be okay with those numbers. And you have to know that birth control does not prevent against sexually transmitted infections or HPV, anything like that. So condoms and safe sex practices are so important still. But specifically, if we are looking at how do you take this and what to do in certain circumstances. So it must be taken the same time every day. One of the top side effects or all of the side effects are typically progesterone heavy things. So you might feel nauseous, bloated, fatigue. Those are some of the top side effects. Some people get acne. So if you tend to get acne before your period, you might have an increase in this. And some people get a headache, especially if you get hormonally induced headaches. Now, when you are taking this, when do you start it? So the pill box says you can start this on any day as long as you start taking it around the same time. And that is true. However, depending on where you are on your cycle, if you want to minimize having breakthrough bleeding, which is another side effect, it's best to start it right when you're having a period. So if today is your day one of a period, go ahead and start taking it now so that it can prevent you from ovulating that cycle. But the lining will be on the thinner side. If you start this in the middle of the luteal phase, you're going to have a thicker lining and you might have more breakthrough bleeding. So I hate breakthrough bleeding. I would recommend starting it around the time when you're on your period. The instructions do say two for two days, the first 48 hours, use condoms or abstain or some other backup method as it takes time for the progesterone to start working. Also, do not skip pills. So if you're three hours later or more, the moment you remember, take the pill. Then take the next one at the time you normally should, no matter if they're the same time. If it's the same time, take two of them together and then get back on track. You are going to want to use backup method if you take a pill late, so even three hours late is late, for the next 48 hours. So make sure that you are aware of that. Well, if you have a GI bug or diarrhea vomiting, then you might need backup method because we can't feel 100% certain the pills getting absorbed. If you have an absorptive GI disease, then you need to talk to your doctor to see if this option is good for you because a lot of times it's not. Now on the pro side is that this is over the counter and that when you wanna get pregnant, you stop taking it, your period's not gonna have any long-term side effects. This progestin only lasts for 24 hours at best, and that's why we're so picky about the time you take it. This is unlike some of the other types, whereas for an IUD, the impact on your uterine lining might take a few months to recover from, and from the depo provera shot, even though you need it every three months to prevent ovulation, one single shot may prevent ovulation for up to 18 months. So I do not recommend you take that if you want to be pregnant in the next two years. Another important thing about the O-pill is that you're gonna take it every single day. This is not something where you're supposed to stop it, have a period, restart it. Having a monthly cycle is not needed, especially if you're using hormonal contraception. So you're taking this every single day. If you have breakthrough bleeding, just keep taking it. You get through the 28 day pack and you'll get another one and keep going. Hope this helped you understand a little bit more about O-pill and the new over-the-counter contraception. Honestly, I am just all for easier access to contraceptive options. Although please remember your OBGYN, your PCP, there's a lot of other reasons why we need pap smears, general health evaluations, STI screenings. And so please don't let this prevent you from getting your overall health checked up and making sure that everything is okay. If you have any questions, please ask below. And as always, you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or learn more on the As A Woman podcast. Thanks friends.